Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. Our topic today is International Day 2012. Our special guest today is Terry Shea, TJ Shea, and he's brought along some Fable Vision Ambassadors. We'd like to remind you, or if you're new to the show, that we do have a terrific tool in LiveFinder where we curate all the uh, resources that are shared by the presenter. And if uh, your sharing in the chat is appropriate to today's subject, we also put that in uh, the Live Binder as well. We do have a website, live.classroom20.com. And specifically, I point you to the Archives and Resources page, because we will post the uh, recording of today's show in Blackboard Collaborate, a uh, audio file, an embedded movie file, a record of recording, excuse me. Uh, the chat log is uh, posted there as well. So you'll find the conversation made but going quickly uh, by you as we're talking. And missed a link. We go back, specifically Peggy and her great uh, generosity, goes back and collects those links and puts them into the blog post and archives and resources for you so that you can catch the links either on the blog post or in the live binder. I think I warned a few of you a few minutes ago that we do have a world map, and we would like you to try using the laser pointer in the whiteboard tools on the left of your whiteboard, the second one down, those little starbursts. If you could click on that and drag it across, and show us where you are located in the world. And if that doesn't work for you, please feel free to type it in the chat. Thank you very much, Shambles, for being with us out there in Thailand. Quite a few people seem to be coming from the United States. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario. I know Kim's in San Antonio, Texas, and Peggy is in Phoenix, Arizona. Do we have another Canadian, I think, up there? Or maybe the star has gone somewhere. Maybe say hello if you're from Canada. Nice to have some neighbors with me. Great. Well, thank you very much for playing with the whiteboard and your laser pointer. Now I'm going to put you to work with some poll questions that are going to help uh, Terry get a sense of his audience. So if I rec remember saying to you, just below your name, the far right icon is a little check mark. Click on it, get your drop down menu, and please, can you tell me, have you read the dot book by Peter Reynolds? So it's either yes or no. Can wait for the votes to come in. Okay, I'm going to publish the responses to the whiteboard, and we'll take a look at um, the results. And about 41% of those who were able to answer have indeed read the book. The second poll question is: Have you or your students participated in a dot day? waiting for you to vote. I think most people have had a chance to vote, so here's the results. Uh, almost 50% have not participated in that. Day, and I'm sure that you're going to be uh, very appreciative of, of Terry's suggestions of how to participate. Question number three is, have you used Skype for educators for connecting with other students, classrooms, and educators? I think most people have had a chance to vote, so here's what the results are. We're about a third, a third, and some have not been able to use the, t the polling feature. So you give a nice idea of um, how many people can share their experiences, and those are going to be able to learn from the pre presentation today. Thank you very much, everyone, for 
thank you the opportunity to uh, vote in the poll questions and participate in the world map tour. So I would like to start our presentation today. Again, it's the International Dot Day, and my special guest is Terry Shea, and he has a list of uh, Fable Vision ambassadors with him today. I'm going to let him introduce uh, his ambassadors to you. I'll just give you some background on, on Terry. He's a grade 5 to 12 vocal music and computer teacher at North Tama School in Prairie, Indiana. He's an adjunct, fa adjunct faculty member at Upper Ottawa University at the Waterloo Center, and he's the lead ambassador for Fable Vision Learning. So I'm going to give you a chance to uh, introduce quickly your ambassadors, and then I'm going to direct you to our um, newbie question. So if you wouldn't mind introducing Terry, your ambassadors, I'd appreciate it. And put your mic on. And Joining me oh, today no. are Karen McMillan, Marianne Malicious, and Heather Temsky. They will be joining us as ambassadors and dot day sharers. So great, thank you very much. And I know that uh, Karen is a seventh grade teacher at Christ the King Catholic School in Northern California. Heather is a fourth grade teacher in Sweet Apple Elementary in Roswell, Georgia. And Marianne is a fifth grade teacher at Council Rock District School District in Pennsylvania. The uh, whole session today is about uh, the sharing of Dot Day, about Peter Reynolds' classic book that was first published in September 15, 2003. That's a good. Um, nine years ago, and the book has a challenge to all of this to mark to make your mark and see where it takes you from. And we have a, a celebration coming up on September the 15th, and I think this is the opportunity for me now to turn the mic off completely to uh, Terry to explain to us our newbie question. Just a second, I'll get it up for you. Okay, we have two people doing the. Slides. Here we go. What is Fable Vision and what is the Fable Vision mission? So, welcome, Terry and the ambassadors. Uh, the mic is yours. Thanks very much. First of all, I want to thank Kim, Lorna, and Peggy for having us today to talk about this really important event to us. Fable Vision is a company started by Peter and Paul Reynolds. And the thing that strikes me as a teacher that I enjoy is that their mission is to help all learners reach their true potential. One of the founding things of Dot Day is along that lines, um, challenging students, kids to make their mark in the world. Okay, thank you very much. You are in control of your slides, and you can tell us more about International Dot Day. Okay, International Dot Day started in 2009 as a small idea that um, we all have grown tired as educators of bubble tests, and it, it, the idea came from thinking about the book and how it encourages kids to be creative, to be think outside the box, to be brave. And um, the, the idea was to have kids just spend a day in school or part of a day making dots, something that everybody can feel good about doing, everybody can have fun with doing. It started in my school in 2009. Um, this is actually a group of junior high students, and they made a human dot that day. Coming on Thursday, my entire elementary is planning on making a human dot, and perhaps uh, there might be others joining them. So it started as really kind of a small thing. We had fourth graders making dots, and here are some of those from that first year. And it was it's a very simple idea. Uh, they used co crayons, colors, markers, and we just we showed the movie. We had we encouraged them to see dots, to make dots, to make their mark. The counselor was with me, 
and she ended uh, she encouraged kids in a different way uh, about making their mark and made some connections with their classroom guidance. So they, uh, this was the very first year, and there were a few schools around the country who joined us. And it has grown from that day to this is this week. Um, I was kind of encouraged last year looking at the things that Shannon Miller did at her school using just a, such a very simple idea, coffee filters, washable markers, and water. And my junior high students made these this week, um, hanging on the wall of my room. And very super simple, but it kind of opens up new ways of thinking. Um, in addition to that, this is my high school students. I've done this for the last three years. I I went to Dick Blick, bought a canvas, and had students make their mark on the canvas. And then because it looks so awesome, I hang it in my room for the rest of the year. So it's kind of a always a constant reminder that they made their mark, that they can do things in a different creative way. This is the junior high also hanging in my room. We kind of double dotted this year with them. Um, still coming, the junior high and high school kids, I've made out of, I found a big, huge dot craft punch, and this, uh, and I made kind of sparkly, what will be frames, and then a slightly smaller dot punch that the kids will decorate that one uh, on a piece of watercolor paper, and we're going to post those around the room also. Each individual kid in K through 6 is going to make a dot this year, and they're going to put them in the hallway, and we're going to have an art show on Thursday afternoon. Um, and speaking of Thursday afternoon and also last week, um, the date for dot day from the very beginning has been September 15th-ish. So you can celebrate it really whenever you want to celebrate it. Um, I started last week because I wanted to be able to show you that uh, um, these are the things that we're doing. And also, the uh, we'll do some more next week. So it doesn't have to be on the 15th. It really can be any time. The thing that I'm really hoping for the most through the work that I've done on this is that, that it also so extends that that it isn't just one creative day, it's a multitude of creative days. And allowing kids to show how smart they are in a different way. So I'm going to go find a link that I forgot about. But last year, I had students toward the end of the year, I teach high school chorus um, and elementary classes and some computer classes. And in the high school chorus, there was a day that I thought were kind of a little bit stale. We've been working on some songs for a while. So I had them to, I had the students draw what the song was about. And one of my very favorite ones um, was from a sort of unlikely source. And the song we were singing was called Heavenly Road. And the students, I, they drew them. I was putting them up on the wall. My room really looks sort of like an art gallery, art classroom sometimes, more than a music classroom. And the students have, uh, this one student made their heavenly road, the things that would be on their heavenly road. But my very favorite part was there was a parking lot on the way, on the heavenly road, for mistakes. And the, that kind of brilliant thinking is what comes out of kids when you give them a chance to be more creative, to show how they're smart in a different way. So that is, uh, that's kind of my hope in doing this. Um, as of today, we have something like 435,000 people. Um, teachers, students, adults participating on six continents 
And that has all happened because of the amazing people who are touched by this project who share it. Last year we had some all-star, wondrous Twitter people, um, just name a few, uh, Karen, who's here, uh, Marianne, John Shoemaker, um, Shannon Miller tweeted a lot, and they ended up doing a whole week of activities. And that kind of, then that spurs on, like I got the, the uh, coffee filter idea from Shannon, and someone else saw that. And so this year we came up with a guide of some ideas that have happened around the world, and my dream is that we keep updating that with more new ideas. I am, uh, I am able to see the list of participants, and they can, if they want, give an idea. There are amazing, amazing ideas floating out there. Um, people going to sick children in a hospital, sharing dots, making dots with someone. Just amazing, beautiful things happening because of this project. So I would like to turn the, the mic over to Karen McMillan and have her share what is happening in her school. Uh, wow, I really need to update my pictures. Um, so before I talk about what we're doing this year, I, I wanted to, to say a little bit about um, what we did last year, what I did last year. And it was very simple, but, but at the same time very very profound. Uh, I need to apologize in advance because my cat is on his midnight terrors right now. Um, so you may hear him in the background. Um, anyway, last year I was able to read my, um, my copy of the dot to three different classes, my seventh graders, the sixth graders who came into my classroom each day for language arts with another teacher, and then our second graders. And um, I started the whole thing with a conversation about creativity and imagination and what it meant to them. And the very first thing I did was to ask each class, um, do you consider yourself an artist? How many, you know, show of hands, consider yourself to be an artist? And in middle school, each class I may have had a handful and there was, you know, always one or two people that the entire class looked at as that's our class artist, the one. Um, and then my, our second graders came into my classroom and I asked them the same question. Um, how many of you consider yourself to be an artist? And every single one of their hands went up in the air. And I, later that day I asked my seventh graders, um, and I asked this class, this year's class of seventh graders, why do you think that is? Why do you think um, second graders consider themselves to be artists and yet the older students don't? And one of my kids this year said, well, it's because they still use their imagination. And I thought, you know, first of all, that's really profound, but it's also really sad um, that we no longer put an emphasis on um, imagination in our schools. Uh, I'm hearing a ding. Does that mean somebody wanted to chime in, or should I just keep going? Um, I'm just going to keep going until you interrupt me. So this year, I wanted to make it more special, um, bigger if possible, since Terry has got almost half a million people, students, um, involved in it this year. And I'm just, I'm so excited for Terry, because I know how important this is for him and for all of us. Um, so I asked my kids this week to brainstorm in their groups um, for ideas what we will do this year for Dot Day. And as I walked around the class, I saw each kid, each group, excuse me, had two or three ideas um, on their pieces of paper. And they were really good ideas. But I was also hearing like things like, you know, no, we won't be able to do that, or eh, that doesn't really make sense. 
And so I stopped them and I said, you know, I'm hearing a lot of censoring. And that's just basically stopping the creative process. So I put 10 minutes on, stop it. I put 10 minutes on the clock and I said, you have 10 minutes. You need to come up with 50, that's five zero, 50 ideas in that 10 minutes on how we will celebrate Dot Day. There were a few, oh my gosh, is she kidding? Um, a, a few gasps and, and then one or two, game on. So we did it. We had, um, I have like 10 pieces of paper that are filled with Dot Day ideas. Um, I can't go through all of them, obviously, but I'm going to uh, write up a, yeah, Paula, it was awesome, because what happens is they have to stop censoring themselves. They have to just be creative, throw the, all those ideas onto paper, and then later go back and say, okay, how are we going to make it happen? Not, you know, we can't make this happen. Um, now, some of their ideas, you know, were, were interesting, let's put it that way. Um, one group definitely had not eaten breakfast uh, in the morning because all of their ideas involved food. You know, let's make cakes and cupcakes and pies and somebody can bring in um, ding-dongs and those dipping dots. Um, and then, of course, the health-conscious kids in that group were bringing in cherry tomatoes and sliced cucumbers and Brussels sprouts for some reason. But we also have awesome ideas, like a, a giant board that says, choose to matter, all in dots. Um, a, a galaxy of star dots hanging from our classroom ceiling is, is another one. And because I keep telling them every day that they are all geniuses, um, they want to create a, a light bulb made of dots somehow. Um, I have one group that wants to write a dot day anthem. So we'll get that to you, Terry. Um, and then one that really, really kind of touched me was uh, a group wants to make some eco-friendly necklaces uh, made of dots and somehow sell them and donate those profits to Uganda um, because you know we, we were watching the um, uh, Little League World Series and um, we're very interested in the story of the Uganda team. Um, I, I can't express how proud I was of my kids. Um, oh, one, one group even wants to uh, write Choose to Matter on a cake and send it to President Obama. Um, we, we, we were thinking big, let me tell you. So I will write up all of our ideas into a blog post and I will send that link to Peggy and um, she can add it to the live binder. And I think I've talked enough, so I'm going to stop and let somebody else take the ball. Thank you, Karen. I love your passion for this. I love your students. Um, I think I need to come visit because <laughs> it sounds like they're big dreamers. Next, I'd like to hear from Mary Ann Malicious about her dot .dig activities. One thing I very much remember is that Mary Ann wears the dot outfit on dot day. Thanks, Terry. Uh, my dot shirt is actually a vintage dot shirt that I got on eBay. It's from the 80s, so I'm very proud of it. Um, when, when I started celebrating dot day, I was a second grade teacher. And now I'm a fifth grade teacher, so I actually have some of the same students that I had in second grade. When we started um, talking about International Dot Day this week, this was our first week of school, the kids' faces just lit up when I told them we would be doing the same um, holiday, I called it, that we did in second grade. And they really remembered the um, that day and all of the activities that we did. It was something you could tell was very special to them. And they sort of became the celebrities in the classroom because I have a video, it's an Animoto video um, that plays, it's still on my website. And they were showing the other kids and it was, it was sort of like they were famous being in this video. One of the 
big things that they remember doing in second grade was creating 3D dots. And what we did is we took paper, white, um, it was bulletin board paper that we taped together to make big circles that were about uh, one meter in diameter. So I had four of them, and I put the kids into small group, well, they were, I guess, about groups of about five or six, and they had to design these big circles. And then we took two of the circles and put them together, staples and tape, and stuffed, stuffed them with newspaper. So if you can picture, they sort of look like big pillows that were these 3D dots. And they became a part of our classroom. I, um, I warn you, if you do that, to, um, that the kids did not want to get rid of them for the entire year. So we, we had these big dots in our classroom for the entire year. But again, like I said, the, the, that was a huge memory for the second graders, and of course, they want to make the 3D dots again this year. Our, our room's pretty tight, so my one thought is to do mini 3D dots. The great thing about that is it's a really good uh, team building exercise because they had to cooperate to create the dots. And again, it was a real neat creative activity for them. Another thing that we do each year is we, we have buddy classes in our school. We're a K-6 school, and so we have a buddy. We, this, as fifth graders, we have a, a third grade buddy class, and it's a great time to get together with our buddy class and do activities. Um, last year, what we did, that was my first year in fifth grade, we had um, a dice activity. So if you think of any kind of dice games that you can do that has dots on it, one is called Pig Dice, and you can, you can look up the directions for it. But it's a real simple uh, game to play where you, you have to keep rolling and adding up the points. And, if you get a one, you lose all your points if you haven't banked them. Um, I think the, the website is mathwire.com, I think it is, um, where I found the directions for that game. Another super uh, part of the fun things that we do is Twister. Our gym teacher has six um, mats for Twister, and um, so we have a whole class Twister game. and then. Each person who wins on the mat then has a final round of Twister, and fantastic. If you're in a younger grade, it was um, um, the best assessment uh, that I, I, and I didn't plan for it to be an assessment, but any of the kids that actually struggled doing Twister left and right and just maneuvering themselves on the, on the mat actually struggled a little bit in school. So it was a great way for me to kind of get to know them as kids. But loads and loads of fun. They would do that every day if I let them. Some of the things that we did um, that connected to the Make Your Mark um, focus, we each of the students had a little slip of paper, and they thought of one way they would make their mark either in their community, in, in the school, or in the world, one thing. And then they also, I asked them to give one to a family member, a neighbor, um, someone, a friend in the school perhaps. And by, before the 15th, they would bring them in. They would all decorate the slips. And then we, we, we made a huge display of all the different ways that they would make their mark, the, then, the, then they would have a slip of someone else. We also sent them out to administrators, um, our superintendent, principals, um, and then special teachers like our, our art teacher, our music teacher, and we collected them all and made a huge display, also our buddy class. And it was a great way to just look at all these different ways people were choosing to make their mark one way. And I will have, I say that the adults that we asked had a really hard time picking something. They were afraid to put something down on the paper, weren't sure what to write. And um, the kids like when I tell them that story about how the adults are really afraid to put something down on paper. But I think the ones that we've done it more than once, they're a little more comfortable. You know, putting a goal down, what, what do you want to do this year? What we do then at the end of the year, and this is something you might want to think about, is then I have the kid, we, we saved all the slips, and then we t attach it to a letter at the end of the year, and we send a letter to all of the people and ask them, how did it go this year? Did you achieve your goals? And then the kids write a little letter about what they've done, and we send it back to 
all of their friends, their family, and everyone in the district who um, sent us a note at the beginning of the year. And then one thing I added last year, which was a huge hit, is we made a Make Your Mark Award. And it's a big circle, and we thought about, we did two. Um, someone who has already made their mark, and what we, we, we voted for someone. We had two students in our school who the previous year, um, through the spring and summer, collected letters for troops in the Middle East. And so we gave them an award, a Make Your Mark Award for that. And then I also, I had someone that I went to high school with who was in the Middle East. And so we gave him an award. And we actually, well, I did it. I gave it to him via Facebook because he was overseas, um, thanking him. And so we, we handed those out on International Dot Day. So we'll think of someone we haven't picked yet for this year to give the award to someone um, who has already made their mark and the reason why. That was really great. Um, there's lots of connections that we do through science. We, we do micro worlds, and there's lots you can do with microscopes for dots. So I try to think of social studies, science, math, all different ways. Anything, once you start thinking of dots, you'll find them everywhere. And so anyway, we could connect dots. That's what we do before, during, and after International Dot Day. Um, I can post my website um, when I'm finished talking, and I put a whole bunch of ideas and photos there if you want to take a look at them. So thanks for letting me share, and I'm handing it off. Thank you so much, Marianne. Uh, just awesome ideas. It's wonderful that everybody comes into this project with their own way of looking at it, and that's what makes it so amazing. So thank you, Mary Ann. Heather, are you able to talk with us? Um, I think so. Can you hear me? We can. Thanks. Fabulous. <laughs> All right. So I was a little late on the setup piece, so we were worried whether I was going to get in, but it sounds like I'm here. Um, so I have been uh, participating with my own class in um, dot day since the first year that it existed, and um, and up until this year, it really has just been um, an individual thing. I have um, done it with my class and um, buddy class also, just um, like Marianne was talking about, and we have gotten together and listened to the big screen books version where Peter has narrated the story. Um, this year I'm very excited that Discovery Education is doing um, um, a live stream with Peter on Wednesday, so that's on our schedule this year. Um, we have uh, made dot bookmarks with our buddies and um, read, uh, you know, we have a couple of other little stories on kind of creativity and things like that that go along with it. There's one, and I can't for the life of me right now remember what it's called, but it's a picture book with all these dots, and it says things like push this, and then when you flip to the next page, it looks like it's changed colors and things like that. And so um, uh, that one's been fun tied in with it. We have used watercolor paper and watercolors, because Peter's such a, um, a big watercolor um, person, and so we had made um, big dots, and we, after doing the book, you know, dots by not making a dots, little dots, big dots, different colored dots, um, all of that, and I use a swirly gold frame that I found a couple of years ago with something else I don't even remember, and took it out, and now it sits in my closet waiting for dot day each year um, for it to make its uh, appearance. And so I take pictures with each of the kids' photos in um, the swirly gold frame. Since then, I have also found, um, it's, I, I forget the, the name of the people that make it, but there is, are actually pads that look like um, photo frames. And so I've used them for other things, and it's, um, they make a lot of uh, kid, um, uh, games and, and things like that. It's two people's name, but I'll put it in after I, I get done. Um, 
But anyway, so we have actually now not just been able to do the picture in the swirly gold frame, you know, for its moment, but actually um, able to put them in the frames to hang up these paper frames, which I love. Um, this year, though, after it's, you know, I, I, last year my principal came in and said, oh, I love this. And, and I had um, to a, an assistant and another teacher that were working in my classroom last year. And so we, I had gotten the, the t-shirts for the three of us. And so she came in and we were wearing our shirts and they arrived um, that morning, which was fabulous because it was a last minute decision. Oh, I needed shirts. And uh, so we were wearing our shirts and doing our activities and the other class was in and she loved it. And she said, we really need to try to get this bigger this year. So um, remembering that, I approached her again as it got a little closer. And so we are looking at more of a um, school-wide activity. We have a fabulous art teacher that um, that loves uh, Ish and the dot. So she's going to get involved with the classes. And um, I have sent out some ideas, to, um, the, uh, the little I, um, like teacher's guide, the little teacher's guide with different ideas that different people are jumping on. And also, <clears throat> throwing out some, some other ideas of their own. So I haven't had a chance to really get with everybody to find out what's in the works, but that um, people are doing things on different days. I know um, several of us are participating in the live stream, which I just saw that Kim put up, um, and then making dots on Thursday and Friday um, following that. And so I'm real excited to get around to the classrooms and, and uh, get a bunch of pictures of, of what um, kind of things people have come up with. Um, so I guess I guess that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much, Heather. Uh, I'm glad that you could join us. Another uh, an example of how people take this project and really run with it, make it their own. Awesome. Um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is <laughs> I, th I find myself very, uh, very uh, fortunate. Last year, I on dot day, I was in the middle of looking through all the different projects coming in from all around the world, and I received a dot from Sharon Creech. For those of you uh, who aren't uh, big time readers, Sharon Creech is amazing, wonderful, um, a true inspiration, a true lovely person. And she sent me a dot on dot day. If you look under the D in the graphic that's up right now, there is a greenish, yellow, purple dot. And that one is from Sharon Creech. And the first, uh, I looked at it, I loved it, it, it was amazing, and a couple of months later I thought, you know, how really truly inspirational would it be for kids to come and see their favorite authors, illustrators, um, and other celebrities make dots. So, Celebra Dots was formed. I'm going to take you to that website. And my understanding is that then you can um, look around there. If you look at the alphabetical list of celebrities on the right-hand side, you'll see some probably pretty famous names. And maybe not totally recognize all the names, but you will know the things that they were involved in. For example, um, Kathy Appelt, Lynn Averill, uh, awesome illustrators, authors. Um, on down the list, the, Sharon Creech, because she's such a dear, uh, sent me one for this year also, so that was posted. Uh, Katie Davis, Amy Dykeman. Um, I, I'm hoping that you will take your students on a tour around this site because it has absolutely astounded me every single time when I receive a new one. Susan Eddy is uh, an illustrator who works in clay. And if you go to her 
uh, to her uh, site there, you can see that how she does that project. So she shows how to make her dot, and there's a link to her YouTube site. Um, Emma Walton Hamilton and Julie Andrews, Carol Hart, who was one of the writers for uh, Sesame Street and a producer of Free to Be You and Me. Tia Kreder is a the art director at Pixar. Um, and, and just if you look at what's here, we have you know original drawings. We have raspberry juice with Bethany. Um, just some amazing pieces of work. So uh, it's been a great way to show creativity um, from some really sort of, you know, not sort of, but really famous people. I th these have already been mentioned. The Discovery Education Network is having Peter on Wednesday. I think that is. And I, I know I have some students going to attend. And uh, thanks, Bill. Just put in the uh, link. Um, also, a very major event in Boston, if you're in that area, on September 15th at the Boston Children's Museum. They're having a global kickoff kick for International Dot Day with the mayor of Boston with Peter reading the dot and lots of awesome partners um, in that area who are going to be part of this uh, amazing movement. Um, the Celebridots, yes. If you look at each individual page, let me go back there so I can choose one. Sorry for the delay. Kristen Tubb has been one of the best dot connectors out there. Um, each dot then tells a little bio of them. It links to the author, illustrator, celebrities um, website. It shows a couple of their more uh, popular or new books. So each one has a little bit information on that person. And honestly, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the Celebridots. Um, if you think about just from being that person, you get a Facebook message, a tweet, um, maybe an email from someone, and it says, OK, you don't know me, and this is crazy. But would you make a dot to share around the world? Um, it's really, it's really a remarkable thing. I also wanted to, since we're on, uh, on the web, show you the latest map. I just re, I, I just added some new people today. And OK, there we go. Uh, it takes a little while to load because there are so many sites. I would recommend when you look at this, is that beautiful? <laughs> uh, when you look at this to do some zooming in, uh, I'm thinking there would be some great lessons in geography here if you look at um, all the different places that people are celebrating. And yes, they are in dots. Looking at this list and sharing it, my the secretary at my school is also the cheerleading coach. And she emailed me, I can't tell where people are making dots because there are so many dots. And because of my passion for this, and of course, because she's a, a great person, 
um, the homecoming dress-up theme for Thursday at my secondary school is dot day. So uh, it's it's nice when people share the love of something with you. Next, I wanted to just highlight a little bit of John Shoemaker and Shannon Miller last year made an animoto of their celebrating together. And as I understand this, everyone needs to hit play. Is that right, Kim, Lorna, or Peggy? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, let's all watch play. We're just going to watch a little bit of this. things that I find really interesting is that they are Skyping each other, um, show, sharing their uh, projects. I think it's an amazing idea. The dot club dot org slash dot day is a place to go learn all about making your mark, learning all about now, can we take questions? Absolutely. I um, didn't see any, but um, if you would like to ask a question, you can continue to type them in the chat, or we can give you the mic and you can ask your question of Terry or of any of the ambassadors that are in the room. This is a great time, as Peggy said, for you to uh, share some of the dot day activities that you might have done in your classroom, whether you're an ambassador or not. And that's a great idea that, to share the hashtag dot day and the Twitter name is dot club connect dot com and Terry did you share how you came up with this idea of dot day I I don't think I did um, just that it started as kind of a I wrote to Peter and I said you know there's so much tests and all that kind of stuff at school let's have a day where kids make dots and so it really started that way, and it's just taken off because of amazing people like Heather and Karen and Marianne and a, um, a lot of Joan I've seen pop up here. Um, also the Fable Vision Learning Team, um, Becky and Julia and Bill, 
and Paul Reynolds um, really making a lot of connections for us, really helping get the word out. Um, just some amazing, amazing people who believe in the same thing that I believe in, which is we need kids to be very uh, creative, come up with new solutions, um, make the world better. And as Michelle just pointed out, the dot day activities are not just limited to K-12 schools. Um, there are a variety of different institutions that also participate in creating their mark and leaving their dot on the world. And you can start by playing the Anamoto, uh, reading the book, and then creating all types of different ways that the students can create their dot in the world. And Sophia has some questions about, have you done this with Spanish countries, and uh, what is it called in Spanish? I believe it's called Opunto in Spanish. Uh, I'm sorry for not being very good at that. Um, El Punto, thank you. And it is, uh, it's really cool. Um, I've seen celebrations in Portugal. Um, it, it's, the, it's going on all around the world in different languages. I'm sure it's been translated many, many, many times. Yes, over 20, Bill. Thank you, Bill. Over 20 different languages. So um, if you go to the, the main site, you can um, find the way to find the information that you're looking for in your language if you're using a language other than English. Oh, and Becky's and, pointing out, yes, it's also in Braille, the dot and dots. Awesome. And if you ever have the opportunity to to see Peter and to hear him in person and talk about the, the book and, and see him perform with students. I highly recommend that. He's just amazing with students and the students really, really um, are engaged and, and, and he really connects with the students. So I recommend that as well. Yes, anytime you can hear Peter, it's a good day. Um, I love the comment, my head is about to explode from all the possibilities. <laughs> but it's an awesome thought. Uh, since we have a minute, earlier in the show I mentioned the, the uh, after the dot, I had students create um, pictures from what their uh, thoughts of the song were, their, their dreams about the song, and about, I don't know, halfway down that post, there is a, is the parking space for mistakes on your road. So I think um, it's a cool idea to have the students think about something, even in my case music, in, in a way that they can draw it or create it. And that was Terry's blog, and it's very inspirational. Um, and I highly encourage you to subscribe to it if you haven't um, already done so. It's um, very motivational. And I do encourage you to consider making a parking space for uh, mistakes that occur personally and professionally. And we have tons of resources that are in our in our live binder that we will continue to share with you so that you can have all of these resources in one specific place. And this is one example of the big screen book, the interactive edition that you can use with students. And there are a lot of resources that are surrounding the dot, the book, that you can use with your students 
So I highly encourage you to explore those resources. And um, you don't necessarily need the book. You can tell the students about the book. You can read the book. Um, and, and there are a lot of things that you can do if you don't have access to the book. And there are a lot of things that you can do uh, to support this activity and sign up to participate and um, really leave your mark on with your students and do something positive with your students um, that is something very creative and inspiring for your students. I wanted to put up the big screen books edition um, because I knew that there were maybe about half the room who has not yet, uh, who have not yet come up with um, an idea for the dot day. If you want to share the whole book with your class and you don't have a bookstore nearby, this is a great project, a uh, great program from Fable Vision Learning, which is Peter's company, that you can digitally download this on the night before you show it to your class and be ready to go. And then you can just project it and talk about it and share it as well. And it, it's very colorful and engaging um, as in addition to just a regular size book. Yes. So um, that's something else that you might want to consider doing with your students um, in addition to having just the, the book that you might want to share with your students. <laughs> there, there is a conversation in the chat about it's like having Peter in your room. I'll, I'll tell you that I've ha had the good fortune to be with Peter as he's read the dot many, many times. and. Every time he reads the dot, I get goosebumps. So this is an amazing resource because he is the narrator. Wow. That, yeah, that, that is a good point about it being like him, being in the room, reading it, narrating it right there with you. And that's the latest number of participants. And hopefully you'll sign up and the number of participants will increase even more and share this with your colleagues and uh, we can increase it by September 15-ish and have almost 500,000 participants and students and all kinds of activities. And we do hope that you'll share them with us. and. Um, let us know the things that you have done with your students. So I'm going to formally go ahead and close out the show. We can continue our conversation. If you do need to leave, we respect uh, your time and we understand that. Uh, but we do welcome you to stay on and continue the conversation. Uh, but if you do need to leave, we understand that. We want to let you know that on September the 11th, Steve Hargadon will be interviewing Pat Faringa, and on September 13th, he will be interviewing Shelley Blake Pox, and on September 18th, Jamie Bulmer at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. So we hope that you will tune in to his interviews. And on September 15th, we will have someone, uh, Sam. Chaudhry from Class Dojo, which is a behavior management tool. We hope that you'll tune in then. And we will have a featured teacher, Karen Mensing, which is going to be a great session. And then David Trust on September 29th. So you're going to want to stick around for those sessions. Those are going to be fantastic. We also would love for you to nominate a featured teacher or educator or somebody that works with teachers or colleagues or students. The link is in the live binder. And you can also put that information on the survey that opens as soon as you exit the session. You don't need to do anything. It opens automatically for you. And you can request a professional development certificate 
by watching a recording or participating in a live session. Just put your name and your email address and Peggy will get that out to you. You can also subscribe to our, our iTunes U channel. That's our URL and that is also in the live binders uh, if in case you lose uh, uh, the link. You can subscribe to the MP3s or the MP4s and take us with you wherever you go. Or you can subscribe via an RSS feed reader and then you get the uh, different recording links as well as the resources that were shared and the chat log that way as well. So you can do that either way. And we want to extend a very uh, special thanks to Terry and all of the Stable Vision ambassadors that uh, shared today um, that I know there were some that are in the audience that we didn't necessarily speak to, um, including myself and Paula, um, as well as others, and Bill and some great people. And to Steve Hargadon, who is our founder, and to Weebly.com for providing our website and to each of you for sharing your links and great ideas in the chat and to Blackboard for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week. And so now we're going to pass it back to Terry and the other ambassadors. And if you have questions that we missed, we would love for you to uh, ask those now. The things look kind of like they were winding down. I want to make sure that you have your opportunity to ask your question. If not, you can always um, contact them through one of the links in the live binder. And uh, Peggy, if you'll get that link, I thought I had it, but I didn't. Um, if you can. Uh, you can always contact them that way and if you think of something after the session and Terry is very approachable and uh, so helpful he's been so kind to me over the years and just been a great friend to me and the whole the whole Fable Vision crew is just wonderful so there's lots of places to find uh, help and contact people through the uh, links in the live binder and through lots of people in our sessions that join us each and every week. So we're, um, looks like the questions are kind of winding down. So we're going to go ahead and let Terry and everybody, Terry is, um, you can contact Terry via his uh, Twitter or Terry at FableVision.com is his email. Uh, Fable Vision Learning. And we're going to go ahead and let him and everybody that intended the session today enjoy the rest of their weekend. Thank you so much everybody and we look forward to having a wonderful International Dot Day. We look forward to seeing you online and thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great weekend and be sure to log out and exit the session when you um, as soon as you're finished with uh, getting the information down. And we will see you next Saturday at the same time. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. And take care, everybody.